Welcome everyone, it's Lacey Broussard here with Marianne Van Katwich. I hope I said your name right. Did I say it right? Yeah, almost. Got back. Yeah. <laughs> but in English it's very hard, yes. <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> excited to be here. Yes, yeah, so I'm super excited to have you. Marianne is from Amsterdam, right? Yes, Where's... you're saying that's perfectly right, Lacey. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I can say that word right. Yeah. So I want to hear about your sexual empowerment journey. I was with Mary yes. in Greece in April, and um, we were just sharing stories and talking about how we kind of got here into doing this work, and everyone has such amazing stories. I want to hear all of them, so... <laughs> What was your story like? Where did it all begin? Very Where did it all begin? Well, of course it began when I came into this world. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I grew up quite um, liberated. So, and my first sexual experiences and orgasms were actually really wonderful. But they were all with myself, by myself, since a very young age. And if I look back... It's very interesting because when I started getting boyfriends, I started getting heartbroken and I was really trying to feel that love and that appreciation and, you know, that connection kind of but from men, from the boyfriends. And it started to kind of destroy the connection that I had with my own body. And after I gave birth, this fucking hospital, sorry for swearing. <laughs> <laughs> but how they treated me when I was giving birth, they, they really just killed it all. Like my whole connection to my sexual, uh, to my yoni, to my sexual energy too. I was completely shut down, completely traumatized. And, you know, there are so many little things through life that you, you encounter with boyfriends. But what's on top of that, giving birth in the hospital and they just pushed me and forced me to do things that I didn't want to do and they didn't let me give birth the way I wanted. And they, anyway, they cut me also when it was unnecessary. Oh, la, la, la. But what I want to say is that all these small things and then this on top, my body acted as if I had experienced the most horrendous sexual trauma ever. Like this is what, I, what my body was, was showing me. And I knew about the jade egg and I knew like that I, I can heal myself. I know this is just my body being in, in like trauma response or stress response or whatever you want to call it. But I knew that underneath it, I can come back to that place where I was when I was a young child. So I got into the jade egg. I started doing practices, but I didn't really know exactly what to do. So I started reading books and started studying and... Well, that's when my, all the things that I've been doing as a teenager, all the energy work, all the shamanis, shamanistic work, everything started coming together. Everything started to fall into place. And I just started to fully feel everything again through breathing, through, um, you know, releasing all the tension, all the stress. And, and, and if I look back now, it's amazing because I'm actually in a place now where I can really move into such a full, deep surrender that I can now have orgasms and experiences with my partner that I've never ever had in my, in my life. So I'm actually happy that <laughs> all this trauma and things got built up until the point that I said, no, that, that's it. No more. I want to start really feeling my body. That's it. I want to get rid of all this trauma and all this stress. And I want to reconnect again to my real essence because that's, you know, the, the push that I needed to get where I'm now. And yeah. life is fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All the sensations in my body are amazing. And it's not like that I don't ever feel, you know, bad or depressed or angry or all these things. I definitely have days that I'm like, oh God, you know, or feeling angry or feeling sad. But my baseline is very different. Mm -hmm. As a teenager, when all the boyfriends came and I felt heartbroken and I felt like really taken out of my center and disconnected from who, who I was, I, my baseline was depression. 
and now my baseline is calmness it's uh, it's i don't want to say happiness but it's like a kind of calm joyous state and whenever emotions come i'm still at that state but i i can embrace all those sensations from that place of calmness which is so different and that's all because i'm so in tune with my own body so in tune with that magic inside my my yoni so in tune with my womb with my vagina with my cervix with my clitoris with you know my ovaries with all that energy that's inside our female body and it's amazing it's amazing to feel also how you know my my womb is really connected with the earth and i i say this all the time in my uh, yoni yoga class that i give uh, here live in amsterdam that you know the womb has the same exact same qualities as mother earth because this life you put a little seed in the earth and it doesn't really need so much it needs you know some light it needs some water and it will start growing and it's the same in our womb you plant a little seed and it doesn't need so much as long as you keep eating and you drink <laughs> enough water then it becomes a baby yeah. So there, the same magic is there, the same power is there inside our womb. And even if you don't ever had a baby or you don't want to create a baby, that, that, that energy to create magic, to create projects, to live your desires, it's all there in your own body. And that's just amazing. And I want to spread it. I want every woman in the world to know that it's everything she ever searched for. Is, it's inside your own body. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So amazing. Okay. So you went from being quite liberated sexually from the get-go, not a lot of guilting and shaming like we have here in the South where I grew up, <laughs> which is awesome. We all need to move to Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't say that it's not here because we definitely have a culture also where the, it's, the religion is very strong here and it's like okay. a lot of, but my, my mother was particularly very liberated. And she just, you know, even like if I uh, talk about in my courses and stuff and I ask women like, what, um, what was your Yoni called? Like, what kind of name did your parents, well, it's like, mm, luckily it was called like something like Wee Wee or, you know, if, if they were lucky, but most of the time you didn't talk about it. There was, you didn't touch it. There was no talking about it. No, not even a name. But my mother called it pussy. She was like, you're pussy, you're pussy. Like, you know, this is what you do with your pussy. This is, I mean, she didn't tell me what to do with it, but she was actually <laughs> naming. Yeah. <laughs> and she did allow me to touch it. Like she didn't shame me for that. So yeah, that's really, really amazing because not so many women have that. Also here in Holland, I think it's not so uh, common that it's so open and uh, liberated. Yeah. Well, that's awesome that you had such an amazing mother that was like that for you. My yes. goodness. Yes. That for all. So grateful for that. Yeah. All daughters and, and sons too. Uh, I am curious, what is it that you didn't know that you could experience that you do experience now? Because I think a lot of people go into this work thinking, oh, everything's just fine with my sexuality. I'm liberated. And then they don't even really know what they don't know until they experience it. And I'm just curious, what is it that, you know, kind of growing up how you did, fairly liberated and free, that you didn't know then that you know now? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to put to words. So I'm even closing my eyes here to try and feel like how to express that difference mm -hmm. but I think what's the difference is that I wasn't even though I was quite liberated I wasn't really connected to myself to my pure inner essence because I think that's also why I got so quickly taken out of myself when I started having boyfriends and also when I gave birth, I, I, I couldn't even, you know, give my boundaries. If I would be really fully connected to my essence, to my power, to my magic, to that energy, that force inside my own body, I would be able to fully confidently live my life. I wouldn't need anybody really. Like, of course, you still want people around you, but 
that that connection that you feel when you're doing this work is so deep that even if you are alone you you don't there is no loneliness you are just alone Mm-hmm. But that lonely feeling that a lot of women feel like they need a partner, they need someone to fill them up, they need someone to give them that co- good sex because otherwise they feel that emptiness, that loneliness, or that, that like there is something missing. And that's something missing that's completely gone. I'm completely filled up from the inside out. I don't miss anything. Yeah. I can go without anybody. Like, you know, I, I can, I, I'm not feeling lonely. And I can be completely comfortably in my aloneness. And that's a huge difference. But also this confidence to really go for what I want in life without a doubt. And of course, I mean, there are doubts of like, how the hell am I going to do it? But I know my desire and I know that I'm going to get there. Mm -hmm. I just don't know how yet. (laughs) And that's sometimes a little bit confusing, but I know I can do it. And that's, all coming from that place of really, really being grounded in my, in my power, grounded and deeply connected to that, to that core essence, that, that magic, that Joni magic <laughs> inside of me. Yeah. And yeah. And that's, that's really the, the difference, but it's, it's kind of hard to explain. It's almost like, you know, you're sometimes you hear those spiritual leaders say like, you have to experience it yourself and then you will know. This is kind of the same thing. You have to experience it yourself and then you will know, you know, don't take my word for it. Go and experience it yourself. That's really, it's really, it's really a truth. You have to experience it to know what I'm I'm trying to explain because it's, it's so, it's so deep. Yeah. There is such a big feeling of oneness of being connected to everything, being connected to, mother earth being connected to you know the divine the universe like there there is it's it's like i can i can really play with the forces or something like i'm a kind of i'm a, i'm kind of like a wizard or i don't want to say i'm god but it's coming close to that that feeling yeah. <laughs> and that sounds all crazy but that's that's what happens when you can really yeah tune into that essence of of you yeah, that's so powerful because being single now, myself, I find that I struggle a lot with remembering that because it's hard when you live in a world that constantly reinforces the message that you have to look for something outside of you to feel whole again yeah. and to feel uh, complete and I find when I am not regularly doing um, my conscious self-pleasure practices, when I'm not regularly connecting with my yoni, my pussy, uh, and really giving her the time and attention that she desires outside of partnered sex, is when I notice that I start to give my power away and forget yes. that yes. I am cool. And it's, yes. it's hard for even me. And when you're single, and I know that there are plenty of out you, uh, plenty of you out there listening to this, and you're like, really? <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's still hard. It's a constant coming back, but that commitment to like always coming back to your your own practices, always. Yes, you know, exactly. That inner. And by, and by keeping that energy alive within you, like if you feel like, oh, I need a power, a partner to keep that power alive. Mm -hmm. then you're kind of giving it away again, but it's you, it's just you. So it's all about keeping that practice within yourself, keep that going. And sometimes, you know, for me, it doesn't even need to be self-pleasure, although I do love that. (laughs) (laughs) But it can also be just breathing to my yoni, just placing my hands on my womb and feeling that heat from my hands flowing into my womb space and just focusing on the earth energy uh, entering like my body and filling up my womb and from there I can feel really filled up mm-hmm. and then I and then it's like you know then you keep that power within yourself alive without giving it away again to someone else because if it only happens in partners it's like you know you, you're giving your power again away so it's it's really yeah about keeping the practices going that make you stay connected to that essence without uh, 
the man and then of course if he comes along that's even more magical but <laughs> that's still yeah beautiful but mm -hmm. it's not the not the key that um connects you to your power because that's just you right oh my goodness yes okay i'm curious about the birth yes you said that was <laughs> one of the things that it, it seemed to me like it was kind of a turning point for you to be like, wow, that was fucked up. And now I need to get back to how I felt when I first discovered my sexuality. Yeah. Yeah. I, I planned on giving a home birth in my mother's house. My mother gave birth to me in that house where we're still living. So I planned on giving birth in that same house. Mm -hmm. But I got, um, I don't know how you call it in English, but pregnancy, pregnancy poisoning. When you have like um, high blood pressure and there is like... Mm, Preeclampsia. Yeah. Yes. So I got that. So I needed to go to hospital and I was going in and out of hospital and in the, until they said, you have to stay because now your kidneys and your liver are in danger mm. and the baby is in danger. So I'm in danger, the baby is in danger. So perfect. I, I, I appreciate the hospital very much for that, of course. <laughs> yeah. And I was very happy to be there, but I really wanted i trained uh did hypnobirthing training yeah. and i know that i'm really good at that so i said like i want to do hypnobirthing i want to do still my own thing and they said okay you can do that blah blah blah, blah. my partner because he's turkish he was still in turkey because he didn't have a visa so i was on my own and i did ask my mother and my auntie to be there and my best friend to take some photos for my partner but I didn't have anyone next to me to stand up for me, let's say, or to be my voice if I wouldn't be able to speak up. So I didn't have anybody kind of supporting me. My mother was there, my auntie was there, but they were kind of like, you know, didn't really know what to do. So the more they um, put the inducing material on my uh, cervix and they said it can take like three to six days before it started working with me. It, it was three to six hours, <laughs> three hours, I already had a big in my body and I didn't really know what was going on. And then a few hours later, and then they were like, oh, something's already happening. And then six hours later, Ben was already born, like it was this fast. So that was, that was kind of like, they didn't know, they had never had seen that happen before. And I'm really sensitive to all kinds of like drugs. If you give me a painkiller, it's like, <laughs> it can numb my whole face at the dentist. So also this they didn't know what it happened so fast and then when i was giving birth i was doing my hypno breathing so i was in a really deep calm state and then the, uh, one of the not the midwife but the other help nurses i don't know how you call them in english either but they were there and they were saying like wow it would uh, it would be nice if everybody was so quiet and silent you know i was really in my own bubble focusing on the sensations in my body and then at one point they said um he needs to come out now and i couldn't say like just give me some more time i feel everything is fine i was so deeply in my own bubble that i couldn't speak up so what they and the one of the nurses was all the time telling telling me like you need to start to get angry. And I was like, you know, I couldn't even tell her I don't want to get angry. I'm just going with the flow of the contractions. And yes, I'm pushing, but I don't feel like I need to push like angry pushing. I didn't want to do that. So I was following my own way and they just thought I wasn't doing it according to how they thought I needed to do it. So they said, we're going to push him out. So one woman cut. Yeah, I feel like it was a scissor like this big. But <laughs> one woman cut my vagina, you know, like this <laughs> huge. <laughs> and the other nurse just said, just breathe out. And she pushed on Ben's uh, um, bum, so on my belly. Mm -hmm. So they kind of like forced him out. And, you know, it went all so quickly. And I just wanted to take him out myself. So they just mm -hmm. kind of put my hands there to... So I still kind of did this, but it was so, it was, uh, yeah. Totally like, like a shock, like how, how it went, how they took me out of my power. And they, it was kind of like they told me that I couldn't trust my own body. Yeah. That I didn't know what I was doing and I needed to do it according to how they wanted me to do it. And that just felt so fucked up. 
Yeah. And even my best friend who was there was filming it. She was seeing everything. She gave birth after, like uh, two years or a few years after herself Mm -hmm. at home, fully empowered. And she said, wow, Mariana, after I gave birth myself, I realized that you're really right that I didn't need to cut you. She, she could see the picture now of what I was saying all the time. I felt they shouldn't have cut me. And she was like, yeah, but they, they just did. But after she gave birth, she realized, yes, they did, a mis- they did a mistake. They should have just let you do it yourself. So I really felt like they were intruding on my body. My most sacred gateway of my body, they just cut it with a scissor through all the muscle, all the nerves, like, you know, and they push, pushed out my baby, like, how why so i think there was a lot of yeah like i'm taking out of my power i'm not i cannot trust my own body and and so all of these things and whatever deeper layers are are there that touched this this thing yeah came up and i think it's just completely shut my body down because i remember there was a moment after you know, when I was home and then Ali came, that I really felt very sexually alive, that I really wanted to make love to him, but I had all the stitches, so I couldn't do that. Mm. And I really feel like, you know, if, I, if they didn't cut me, I probably would have already had sex then, you know? Yeah. I wouldn't even have teared up. I would have already, and because of the stitches and the trauma that was there, it just like, kind of like, you know, disappeared. And then from there on, I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, feel him like whenever he was trying to touch my body, I felt like, you know, so much tension, almost like I wanted to push him away from me. Like, you know, when you have a sexual trauma, you're like, you go into that shock. So it was all the time as if I was going back into that, into a shock state. And I was like, really? And he didn't know what's going on. He felt like, you know, you're not wanting me. So there was all this like emotional things going on of like, you don't want me. I do want you. Oh God. Yeah. (laughs) Horrible. Yeah. This is so common of many women listening to this right now. And I, I can almost see their hands raising like, oh my God, the same shit happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering what did you do to heal yourself of that to take yourself out of that trauma response and yeah. back to a place of embodied power yeah yes well it's it's a long journey because there are so many layers that you need to go through so many you know and and one trauma is triggering all these other things inside of you so it's like poof, suddenly everything comes up mm-hmm. so it it takes it takes gentle gentle healing steps and yeah there is i mean there are so many things that that i've done to get there but basically is is slowly reconnecting to your own body and i remember that um you know trying to touch my own body trying to feel pleasure in the beginning i was like i don't feel anything i just feel nothing i don't even know why i'm touching myself like it's boring it's like doesn't do anything to me until I realized that, you know, I don't need to focus on, on pleasure. I don't need to go from completely shut down to now I want to be that fully alive woman that's fully in her sexuality and I'm fully enjoying pleasure in all parts of my body because it, that's a really long uh, leap. Mm-hmm. So instead of that, I decided, you know what, I just want to be able to fully relax. So I went to relax. I started doing breathing. I started doing shaking. I started doing sounding until I was able to really sound out like my raw, wild sounds. And from there, I could start really gently touching my own body, but from a place that I was connecting not to my body, but to my hands. So focusing on the palms of my hands, feeling that heat from my hands, and then gently let that flow through every single part of my body just by really gently touching every part of my body but not focusing on the body but on the hands Mm -hmm. and then i could start to feel like hey my body starts reacting my body starts trusting again my body starts opening again and then slowly letting my partner come back in again having him touch me again having him slowly come and then enter me and after a while like now we have the most amazing 
you know, sex that I can fully open, fully surrender and fully feel everything in my body, even more than before the birth trauma. But it, it, it does take, take time. So it's not like, you know, you do one or two sessions uh, with me and you're, you're healed. It definitely takes, you know, uh, at least a three month uh, period of time. And even after that, it takes, you know, you continuing those practices on your own to keep, keep going. There's always more. And sometimes it's funny because sometimes I ask myself, how much more pleasure is my body able to feel like is is there is there is it capable of more right and it's infinite like it's fucking infinite like it's more only more and more and more which is it's so amazing it's like mind-blowing to feel that it can feel more and there is after that more there's even more mm-hmm. and it's a journey it's like it's a lifetime practice it's it's never gonna end but yeah. if you really want to feel that magic inside your own body, then this, this is what you want to do. Then, then, then you will do it every day because you will feel the effects. You will feel how it's from the inside out. It's like creating a ripple effect and it's changing not only yourself, but then also, you know, your relationship with your, with your man, with your child, and how you are standing in your business or in your work. So it's really, it's really creating a ripple effect, which is amazing. Yeah. Wow. You started releasing the trauma from the birth by what I guess I would call um, completing stress cycles, right? Uh, Yes, yes, yes. Shaking, releasing, like really letting yourself sound and go wild and get all of that out of you. Because just like animals in the wild, when they get traumatized, they go shake. Yes they'll go off in the woods and just shake it off or they'll yeah. they'll do what they need to do to let it move through them. And I love that. That was probably not something anyone told you to do, but you just had like that instinctual. Yes. And then I wanted to start working with a jade egg. So I started to work with a jade egg. I started reading books. I started doing core, different courses Mm-hmm. until I found like, okay, this is the practice that I really, it's really helping me. And then I, I went fully with the Jade Egg as well. So it was, yeah, completing the stress cycles, mm-hmm. then working with the Jade Egg. And from there, like now there are, uh, there are times that I don't use the Jade Egg for a long period of time, but I still feel that connection. I still feel, you know, my whole body is opening, but the Jade Egg was definitely helping big time also to, to help me open up into, into the surrender. Yeah. Yeah. And I love how once you were getting it out of your system, the trauma out of your system, and then you came to this kind of intermediate period of just being able to touch yourself, but feeling it. And as you were saying, and I was like, so she wasn't quite in her body yet, but you were, you were just allowing yourself to open up to the sensation of pleasure. Yes. And the moment that you do that, you move in your body. Mm. that's that's like the contradiction because you you stay out of your body to make yourself feel safe right so you connect to your hands and then you like start touching your body but the moment that you start touching your body from the focus on the palms of your hands you you somehow move in your body like it's so it's a weird weird (laughs) weird thing but it works yeah that's very interesting Yes. I never thought about it like that. But yeah, you're coming from, I can't really inhabit and be in my body yet because I have this disconnect and this trauma. Yes. But if I can just focus on my palms touching my skin, then that can kind of be that transition to help you to drop yes. in a bit more. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. And then deep full breaths because the breathing is definitely key too. The moment that you breathe more, you can start feeling more. You also get more into your body because when you're traumatized, you, you, there, it's like you, start, you stop breathing in a way or you have that very shallow breath. So the more moment that you really like allow deep, full breaths and allow your breath to really fill up your whole body, not just like in a linear way, but you know, even 
all way in all directions it's 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 doing something also to your to your brain it's doing something to your body to relax deeper to really feel that uh, surrender yeah oh and then that last part of your journey was expanding into infinite state yes. of pleasure which i can completely relate with because yes. uh, all the time i'm fascinated at how much more pleasure I didn't know what I could feel that I now feel. It's, it's, I look back every year and I'm like, wow, like I didn't know my body could feel any more pleasure. I didn't know it could get any better. And then it just keeps getting better. Yes. And, and it's funny because I'm uh, 43, so I'm getting closer to menopause. And I have friends around me that are already kind of in menopause or also like touching upon it. And so many women have that belief that, the moment I hit menopause or the moment I pass 40, I'm going to dry up. That's bye-bye to my sexuality. And I feel like, no, this, this is only the start. Like what the Tao is saying of like menopause is second spring. I so fully feel that. Like I'm, I'm just starting my second, like I'm not even in there yet, but I really feel that the moment that you hit menopause, it's like, it's, it can be so much more liberated, so much more freedom inside your own body because you don't need to be worried about getting unwanted pregnancies anymore. Because, and that can give also so much uh, relief. And I feel that if you do this work, if you're really in tune with your body, if you can really feel from that, you know, inside of your body, you will know what your body needs to keep your hormones more balanced because your hormones of course are doing a shift when you're no longer uh, releasing um, your your um, your ovaries are not releasing uh, the eggs anymore mm -hmm. so something of course is happening in your body <coughs> excuse me but i i believe that if you do these practices that you can really find that um, balance in your hormones so that you can really also in your main menopause have infinite pleasurable experiences mm. Yes. Hell yes. 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 <laughs> I'm super curious what yes. is going to be available to me when I hit menopause. Like that wasn't previously because yes. my body is no longer spending all of this energy, you know, preparing to make a human. Exactly. What is even possible when it's not doing that anymore? Like, How exciting is that, Lacey? <laughs> <laughs> How many things will be possible then? <laughs> oh my God. We're going to build our Pussy Mansion retirement home, right? Oh, definitely. Yes. And we're all wearing <laughs> your Yoni Magic shirt. <laughs> yes. And no undies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I look forward to growing old with you all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> beautiful okay last question yes one tip or trick that you have for becoming a multi-orgasmic mama yeah well definitely start breathing deeper so when you breathe deeper you're allowing yourself to feel more but also what is a really beautiful practice that i'm doing because there are so many things that i could tell but i feel like a beautiful practice is to just slow down because we're so fast paced. And if you want to feel more, it's definitely about slowing down. So if you just stand with your feet flat on the floor and you bend your knees just a tiny bit and you make really tiny circles with your hips, like very slow motion and you close your eyes, you take a few deep breaths and you keep going with that deep breathing. So you allow your breathing to really be like long and full, and you make those very tiny circles with your hips. If you like visualize a bathtub full with water and you take out the plug of the bathtub, then you can see that the water is spiraling down. Mm -hmm. So inside your own body, there's also water. So when you visualize that image and you slowly circle with your hips, it's like you connect yourself to that energy of that spiraling down. And mm -hmm. when you focus then on that sensation, on your movement, on your breathing, it's like immediately your brain is calming down. Immediately your thoughts are like kind of disappearing and you can find that calmness inside your own body. And then also shaking 
Yeah. You know, you can either do that before the circling or after the cir circling. But when you when you shake, the stress cycle in your body is completing, and the the circling movement is allowing you to just feel more, to slowly enter your body, but from that calm and still place. And mm -hmm. I think those two practices can be really beautiful to to do anytime, any day, and it will definitely help to. Yeah, start feeling more because that's where it all starting to turn back into your body and to start noticing what's happening in the body and to be able to complete that stress cycle if you feel all those uh, things arise. Oh, I love that practice. That's wonderful. Yes, I, yes. I, call that, uh, I think I've heard it called a chi bath and a yoga class once that I took. I was like, oh, that's an interesting word for that. Oh. The teacher was like, oh, Lacey, like, I know you got this. You're good with this, right? And I'm like, fuck yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I, I, kind of in, I kind of invented this one myself. So it's really cool to hear that someone is doing the same thing and calls it a chi bath. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like wow. Energy, um, moving through your body. It's like you're you're letting all of your cells bathe and yes. that life energy around, you know. Yeah, or, because that's exactly what it feels like. It's like really calming all of the nervous system when you're making these very slow uh, circles. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's beautiful. Nice. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing all of your amazing yes. wisdom and You're welcome. for sharing your story because I know there are plenty of women listening that can totally relate and that are going to be so inspired by hearing you share that. So thank you yes. so much for being on, Marianne. Yeah, you're welcome. It was fun, fun to talk to you, fun to share my story. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Yes. Bye, Lacey.